So I'm out, uh, well, you can see it's pretty gray today, so there's no fishing going on. I've got the Catahoulas out here running around because this is a break in the rain, allow them to get a little bit exercise. Um, but while I'm doing that, I wanted to share with you some of the action that has taken place this week on, uh, on my trips, on my charters. And it was basically my first week back from surgery. So uh, I've been kind of taking it easy and just fishing with a couple of buddies. And a lot of these guys have helped me out. Guys like Captain Brian Chamberlain and uh, Captain Adam Maillet, uh Captain Jeremiah Carlucci. They've been, <laughs> they've been kindly pushing me around and showing me some, some fishing. But now I'm back with clients. So when you first get back, you have a couple of spectacular days. And then you have a couple of what I call eh, tough days. So what I want to make this video about is how do you make those tough days still productive? What are the ripcord baits, if you will, to give you still a soft landing? Because I'm telling you, when you get in the situation where the fish aren't doing what they're supposed to, no one's immune to that. Not even, not even professional guides. So I'm going to give you uh, in the shop, we're going to go back over to the shop. I'm going to give you an idea of the baits I use and share a trip with you that I did with one of my uh, friends and followers, James Torrey. Uh, he's a Hell's Bay Boatworks owner and uh, an avid fisherman. This guy fishes as much as a professional guide and he aspires to be a professional guide. So uh, I'm gonna take you to some live action with James right now. And I'm gonna go in the shop and get together a couple of three or four baits that are tried and true when this stuff happens and then give you a couple ideas on what you can do to make those days a little more, well, bearable. <laughs> YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. If it's a trout, I'm getting the net. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's big red. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put the. Kind of thing, a little shake up first. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, look. Okay, you get the you get the net open. Only caught them because we didn't open the net. That's not good. It's not a nice overslumber day was I left my net. Woo! That'll do. Help me guys see the net. Get that. That's what I do hate about this. This is a rubberized net though. Yeah, I got one that's got a similar net to it. Bass Pro Shops it has two legs that come out and they fold and come back over, but it fits real red to them. So. Get a quick yeah. I love the backdrop here with all the, the hammock of trees back there and the mangroves. Good icebreaker. Yeah. See if your uh, leader's been yeah, compromised. Yeah. That quick. <laughs> I've been, thankfully, they've you had them right on the nail. That's been my luck. Yeah. I've been running 60 though on that live target. Over well, we're running, we're running 25 fluoro because it's been so clean and clear in these creeks. I mean, this place is, it's gorgeous, but that's a I hope you enjoyed that little bit of footage because that happened right out of the gate. 
first creek we ran to the back of, I likely pulled maybe, uh, I don't know, 150 yards and James stung that snook. And that was a great icebreaker to our day. But let me tell you, after that, we worked our asses off. I mean, it was tough. It was not easy at all. So what plays into a tough day of fishing? Yeah, well, obviously, sometimes it's the anglers. Now, I'm going to take it for granted, and I hope you do too, that James and I are more than qualified and capable of catching fish all day. <laughs> um, so I'm going to rule that out. Then there's the weather. The weather can have a profound effect on whether or not you're going to be successful that day. And some of the days uh, that you fish with weather, maybe it's, it's blowing or maybe you got a high barometer, or maybe the moon's wrong. But I try, to, I try not to let that play into uh, beating me mentally most of the time. Then there's the lures that you use. Sometimes you might be using the wrong lures for the given time. That can make you struggle on a tough day. And then there's always location. Location, location, and location, just like real estate will tell you. But I felt like we really covered that because we started way back in here and we slowly worked our way down until we were on the outside and actually ran all the way to the St. Martin's Keys uh, to do some trout fishing. But that leads me to this, the strategy of how you got to beat that bad day. You got to know when to say when. That's it. That's the key. And for me, when we struggle on a tough day, I tend to fish faster. I really do. Uh, I start power fishing. And that's exactly the strategy that we used in this instance. And I'm going to share it with you a couple of baits that, that really, I mean, really will get you through a tough day of fishing and tell you whether or not you're doing it right. Because what, what I find is the more presentations you make, the better you are. Now, I called this a tough day of fishing. I think James caught um, one snook, four redfish, and we probably caught six, maybe seven speckled trout. And by some standards, that would be okay. But not when you have a guy like James on the bow. When you got a guy like James Torrey on the bow, you really expect bigger things. Because this guy can fish. He can put the cast exactly where you want it. And to watch it all day long from the back of the boat going, oh, dear God, I cannot. If, the, if I had him on any fish, they would, we would wreck them. I mean, destroy them. Um, but I'm going to take you over here to the bench. I'm going to move here. Uh, but we fished the Crystal River Ozello and then eventually out in front of Homosassa on the uh, St. Martin's Keys that day, making stops all along the way. And I mean, we tried everything, but I'm going to show you the key baits that allow us to cover the water so you can have that hit and run style and still be successful. Now, I'm going to take you over here by the bench. I'm going to show you the baits that, that I would, I guess, refer to you uh, or recommend to you, if you will, on a tough day of fishing. No, a redfish. That, that redfish just was not big enough for me personally. Uh, it, it provided some action, some rod bending action. And that happened a couple of times that day with about the same size redfish. But when fish won't bite, the one thing you have to do is you have to fish faster. So I don't throw baits that are Texas rig where I'm trying to be patient and throw slack in them. I'm trying to work baits quickly. Four baits that allow me to work quickly 
would be one, a paddle tail. Now, the paddle tail, and let me hold this in a fashion where you can see it. Avocado red flake, fantastic color. Uh, matches the bottom and cover a bunch, bunch of water very quickly. It's opaque and uh, where it silhouettes really good on darker days. So that's a great bait. If you, if you feel like the other guy in the boat needs to throw something, let him throw a lighter color that's more uh, a bicolor look that has some contrast. Contrast catches fish many days when others won't. So smelt, good translucent bait, especially on bright days. If you got in and out, partly cloudy skies like we had, uh, good color is red bone. Red bone's a great color. But remember, I'd say these three-inch paddle tails, not the fours, because you're just wanting to catch fish on a tough day of fishing. Go to that. Those are sound, uh, tried and true profiles that work. So that would be number one. Number two would probably be a spoon, especially if the day is kind of cloudy and there's a little breeze, something that will give some, throw some flash, some vibration in the water. And the best part is you can cast these things a country mile. And when I mean country, I mean country mile. These are awesome baits. They're underutilized. I use a variety of colors, but this, this tannin color, what we call Texas tea, is fantastic by Aqua Green. That's a great color, great strategy. Thirdly, I throw Miradines. You know, Miradines to me, and if I can untangle them here, Miradines to me, Contrast color. Nothing says contrast like Sweet Home Alabama. That's a great contrasting color and cover a ton of water with it and all three species eat it. Uh, fishing mostly for trout, you know, trout magic, great color. You know, kind of a twist on the whole uh, electric chicken, chicken on a chain color. Fantastic bait. These are fantastic baits to catch fish. And this is the 17 MR, not the 27 that... I always want to throw. These are good baits just for action. And again, long cast. You can, I mean, boom these things out there. And then fast caffeinated retrieves. Caffeinated means fast. You get bites. You get reaction bites. So these work for me. And then lastly, I'll go to jerk shacks. Uh, and when we got out there at the St. Martin's Keys, I didn't want to use the 4-inch jerk shad that I like to use on the inside. I use these 5-inch, like the smoky shad. That's a great color out there because it looks like all the bait fish. Uh, when you're trying to, you know, in a little bit darker water, the wind starts to pick up. Contrast. And nothing catches trout like pink, whether you're using coconut ice or Laguna shrimp. 5-inch jerk shads, and I'm not Texas rigging these. I'm not putting them on the Texas eye. I'm not putting them on the chin locks. I'm putting them on jig heads. They work great. In fact, look at this trout that we caught with a 3 8 jig head so we could bomb them farther out there and work them quickly along the deeper grass flats to catch fish while I get ready to close all this stuff out. Like that underwater footage? God, that water is beautiful. I mean, crystal clear. Crystal clear. Anyhow, I've got to round up the Catahoulas. As you can see, we've got rain back again. And I do not want wet dogs in the house. It's not that I don't care if they're wet in the house. My wife, Blondie, does not want the wet dogs in the house. If you like what you're seeing, though, here at Flats Class YouTube, Give us a big thumbs up. We need it. Big thumbs up and subscribe. Tell your fishing buddies about Flats Class YouTube. Tell them how it is one of the best channels to learn what the pros know. Learn how to fish. My job, make you a better angler. All right, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And I'm going to leave you with this last trout catch that we got on the Sweet Home Alabama Miradine. Until next time, Captain CA signing off. Nice. We just caught this one. We didn't get the GoPro on fast enough, but some solid fish out here this morning. Seen more than what we're catching though, unfortunately. We're hoping that the 
next tide changes our luck. You got away no worse for wear, for where he was pinned, that could have been bad. 